I'm Dr. Tom Mather, the Tick Guy from the University of Rhode Island. Take it from the Tick Guy. One little episode is all it takes to get a tick. So these ticks are called the Gulf Coast Tick. The American dog tick and the Gulf Coast tick are very similar to most people's eye. If we put two of them sort of side by side there, you can see their sputum has white pigment in a diffuse pattern. They're both brown, but the difference is in the size and shape of the mouth parts. The American dog tick shown here has a shorter and a little bit fatter mouth part, whereas this one, like other amblyoma ticks, has a longer and thinner um, mouth part. And so you sort of have to look at just a few characters that distinguish between these two ticks, but they, they could be easily confused um, if you're just looking at them not very carefully. Gulf Coast ticks don't carry the Lyme disease germ but they do have their own germ called Rickettsia parkeri. It's a spotted fever-like disease that people get a little like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, a little bit less pathogenic. Yeah, they're dangerous ticks in that regard. You can get spotted fever um, from them and um, probably about 10% of them are carrying the, the Rickettsia parkeri germ. So they're a little riskier than maybe the American dog ticks, maybe a little less common right now um, in parts of the eastern United States, but um, still a very common tick in the south. Why the Gulf Coast tick? Well, their most earliest finding was down on the southern border of the United States in the Gulf region. They actually are quite common in places like Mexico and South America as well. But the Gulf Coast tick has been on the move in the last couple of decades, moving from the south up into the middle Atlantic states. Now commonly found in places like Virginia, Tennessee, Maryland, and even as far north as um, Connecticut. There are ticks all across America, all across the world, but there are different types of ticks. Different ticks transmit different germs, and that's why it's so important to be able to determine what type of tick it is. You can know what risk you're at if you know what type of tick it is. We have resources on Tick Encounter that show the types of ticks and where they, where they might be found. But you can always take a clear picture of your tick and for free send it to tick spotters and we'll identify it for you and tell you what germs that you might get from that tick. So, Different ticks transmit different germs. Make sure you know what type of tick that you've encountered.